Hi there, this is a message for parents all over the world. If you are a parent or in any way a caregiver of children, you can expand the concept of parenting to many ways, even to aunts and uncles, to grandparents. However you're showing up in support of younger children, I want to send you some love and offer you some encouragement and support and gratitude. I myself am a parent, have been single parenting for a number of years, and I know how challenging parenting can be in the most easy of times. And this is not the most easy of times. We are under a great deal of complexity, stress, all kinds of things that's come at us. I'm recording this on the, I believe the 19th, almost the 20th month of a pandemic, which is a very long time to be in this kind of disrupt disruptive phase of our lives not knowing what the future holds not knowing what is yet to come and we as parents one of our primary roles is to try to support our children in feeling safe and feeling a sense of belonging and so we are carrying a lot of weight in this time and so i'm um, I'm, my name is Heather Plett. I've written a book called The Art of Holding Space and I teach a lot of workshops in how to hold space for yourself and for other people. And I, I, I'm recording this video largely because I want to offer you a little gift. I've picked out some of the teachings from my books and workshops and I'm just doing little samplers for people, for different groups of people and I want to offer you a little sample of that and hope that it will support you as you support your children in this challenging time. I want to introduce you to a concept I talk about quite a lot in my book and in my workshops, and that is the concept of liminal space. This is something that I think is really relevant to the situation we're in right now in this pandemic. We are in a time of liminal space. Liminal is a term that comes from anthropology, and it was, um, Anthropologists were studying rituals and ceremonies in certain um, tribal regions where, where um, they discovered that in all of these rituals, whether it was a coming of age ritual or a relationship kind of ritual, there was always a space in between. There was what once was and what is yet to emerge. For example, coming of age when somebody is stepping into adulthood. And then as part of the ceremony, there was always this space in between that was an empty space. So in my book, The Art of Holding Space, I say liminal space is a period in which something, a social hierarchy, a culture, a belief, a tradition, identity, etc. has been dissolved and a new thing has not yet emerged to take its place. It's a period of uncertainty, ambiguity, restlessness, fear, discomfort, and anguish. Right now, we are in a pandemic and we don't know what we're going to be in a few months. We don't know what our countries will, how things will change, how things will eventually, some, of, some things will return to a sense of normal, but what will the new normal be? We are in this vast and unrecognizable liminal space none of us have been in before. The metaphor that I use to talk about liminal space is the um, movement of a caterpillar that becomes eventually a butterfly. But before it becomes a butterfly, a caterpillar has to go through the chrysalis stage. And the chrysalis is a time when the caterpillar has completely deconstructed to become nothing but this gooey gel-like substance. It doesn't resemble its caterpillar self or its butterfly self. So when we are in a liminal space, we deconstruct and really become a new person. And I think our, our societies do too. There's this disruption of the pandemic that we know something's gonna change. It's just not all gonna be the same. So some of that we have to let go of the old, release the way we believed the world to be at one time, and yet we don't yet know what the future holds. So there is in this um, process, I use a spiral to define this process because it's kind of a churning. There's kind of, it's not a straight line. There's a whole lot of different emotions that show up and you can see them in the pa this pattern here, the chaos, resistance, shock, fear, grief. It's not a comfortable place to be. Sometimes there's easy moments, but it, by and large, it's, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable place to be um, uh, transforming into the new 
butterfly or whoever we're evolving into. So liminal is a period of feeling ungrounded and uncertain about the future. There's a deconstruction when life resembles neither the past nor the future. And there are, they say, imaginal cells that hold the vision of the future. They're the only cells that retain their identity throughout and stay the same throughout the whole process is something called liminal cells. It's a sense of vision for the future that holds the process and directs the process. Now let's talk about holding space. You are parents who have all these, you know, you have children or people in your care um, who are going through this liminal space. You're going through it as well. So uh, let's talk about how you can support people that are going through this liminal space journey. This is another quote from my book. Holding space is what we do when we walk alongside a person or group on a journey through liminal space. We do this without making them feel inadequate, without trying to fix them, and without trying to impact the outcome. We open our hearts, offer unconditional support, and let go of ju judgment and control. So the metaphor that I use when I talk about holding space, I talk about being a bowl for somebody. So if you imagine somebody going through this disruptive phase and you're creating a container of support for them. When we hold space for another person's path through liminal space, we essentially serve as a container, like the shell of the chrysalis, offering and creating a safe place for the chaos, the mess, the fear, the grief, the rage, and the ecstasy, and sometimes everything in between to take place. This container does not direct or control the transformation. It simply provides a safe and contained vessel where it can happen without irreversible destruction. So this is the image I use. It's a simple bowl and this process of a liminal space is going on, but we're not directing, we're simply allowing it to happen and supporting it as it happens. Now, very quickly, I'm gonna run through the things that I talk about and when I talk about holding space and being the bowl, there are three layers to this container. There is the inner layer, that's what you're offering to the person you're holding space for. There's the middle layer, that's the guidance that you're, that you're using in order to offer whatever there is to offer. And then there's the outer layer, that's what's holding space for you so that you can do this for other people. So what you offer, you are bearing witness to what that's just showing up and being present and, and listening to them. You're giving them some containment, you're offering compassion. You're offering selective non-judgment. And I use the term selective here really intentionally because sometimes we do need to use our best judgment. When somebody has done something, for example, if they've bro broken the law, we may need to use some judgment to support them in making the right choice and, and turning themselves in. And then selective guidance. It's knowing when to offer guidance and knowing when to step back and allowing them to guide themselves. There's space for complexity, knowing every situation is different, autonomy, flexibility, connection, and allyship. And there's lots more explanation about all of these things in my book if you want to learn more. The middle layer is what guides you. There's a, there are fewer words there. It's a sense of your intuition. It's what's, what feels like the right thing. What, what are you trusting when you're making a decision about what to offer? There's discernment, that's the ability to make good, well-informed decisions. There's humility, recognizing that you don't have all the answers, you don't know what's the right thing all the time, you're staying humble in this and you're in a learning process with whoever you're learn holding space for. And then there's courage. It's a courageous act to hold space because it can be hurtful sometimes, it can be dangerous, it can take a lot out of us and, and then there's also curiosity it's really important to stay curious I often say that a, a curiosity and judgment don't coexist very well so if you start to find yourself becoming judgmental of someone bring your curious mind to it and this is especially important for us as parents because we tend to go into judgment mind fairly quickly but if we can return to curiosity and actually inquire into what our child is going through that might be different from anything we've ever experienced before. And then there is the outer layer, and there are only two words here, mystery and community. 
And mystery is a word that I use to define the spiritual, to define the natural world, to define however you want to define it. If you use the language of God, that works for you. If you use the language of spirit or the natural world or the universe, I don't want to define it for you, but I want you to find that container that supports you and allows you to be strong as you hold space for your children and whoever else you're holding space for. And then there's community. We need to find the people that hold us and support us because we can't do this alone and we can't have the strength for this unless we have our people. So just a few tips. First of all, I want to say this is especially challenging to do for our children because the more we have invested in another person, the closer we are, the greater the risk to us, the harder it is to hold space. And if our child makes a bad decision, that's a great risk to us. It might reflect badly on us. It might impact our lives. All of these things are possible when you're holding space for your kids. So cut yourself some slack. This is not necessarily easy work to do. First of all, I want to encourage you to help your children understand that this is liminal space they're going through. You don't have to use those lang that language if it's not age appropriate, but maybe help them understand a sense of this disruption, that this is something that that's normal to have all kinds of complicated feelings, to be a little anxious. Whatever they're feeling is not going to last forever, but it's normal and natural and don't shame them for those feelings. Recognize that everyone in your family, including you, is probably more needy and a little more temperamental than usual right now. Practice talking about that to support emotional literacy because the more we can talk about our feelings, the more we learn to manage them and support each other in that as well. Find allies and space holders. This is the community part of that outer bowl. Now more than ever, we need to seek out the village. They talk about, you know, we takes a village to raise a child. Now's when you need that village. Host conversations where everyone in the family can speak to how they're feeling and what they need. You might want to start ad adopting a circle practice of some kind where you pass a talking piece and everybody gets to speak to what's going on for them. And then help people to get, the, get those needs met without you needing to take them all on yourself. Because we have this tendency sometimes as parents to try to be superheroes. And especially in a time like this, we cannot take on that mantle. We are not meant to be superheroes. If this has been encouraging or inspiring for you in any way, I really encourage you to dig deeper. My book is called The Art of Holding Space, A Practice of Love, Liberation and Leadership. And there's lots more resources and information at centerforholdingspace.com. We have an upcoming program. We run an eight month foundation program that's got all of this content and lots, lots more on how to hold space for yourself and others. Go to our website, click on the path to certification and then scroll down to foundation program. And we welcome you to register and join us for that program. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you have a great day.